If you know Zion National Park, you probably know it like this. Blue skies, towering red, orange, and white sandstone cliffs, and trees by the banks of the rapidly flowing Virgin River. But if you leave before the sun goes down, you're missing out on a whole new Zion. Half of the park is after dark, and darkness at Zion is awe-inspiring. When you look up at the sky, you're not just seeing the stars and the darkness and the Milky Way, you're also seeing the silhouettes of 2,000-foot sandstone cliffs. And no matter where else you go in the world, you can't get quite the same skyscape or the same view as that. Zion is a designated International Dark Sky Park. The park is eligible for this designation because it meets three critical criteria. Um, the first one is that the Milky Way is able to be seen uh, across the park, and that is absolutely true here in Zion. The night sky in the park is so dark, you can see our home galaxy stretch across the horizon. Most people confuse it for a cloud, and then when they realize what's going on, that, there's that sense of awe and that sense of wonder that is quite special to places that are this dark. But it doesn't always look like the huge stretch of sparkling white, misty skies some people picture. As night sky experts park ranger Charlie and night sky scientist in parks Serena explain, because the Earth is both orbiting the sun and rotating on its own axis, the night sky is changing minute by minute. And as the minutes go by, different night sky views define every season. So when is the best time of year to see the Milky Way? In late summer, in August, September, October, and then again in January, um, February, on moonless nights. The second international dark sky requirement involves reducing light pollution so it doesn't affect the night sky. Light pollution is any sort of excess light scattered into the atmosphere by human light. Light pollution can come from any type of light source, like street lights, homes, or businesses. This pollution makes thousands of twinkling stars invisible, leaving just a handful visible. Most people live under light polluted night skies. Over 80% of Americans cannot see the Milky Way from where they live. Um, for Europeans, that number is roughly 60% can't see the Milky Way from where they live. And so you can see that here. And so for people to see the Milky Way the first, for the first time here in Zion is a really, really special experience. Zion took intentional action to reduce light pollution in the park. Lights automatically turn off when people are not around them. Blue lights are replaced with warm lights and light fixtures have shielding, like small hats on them. So the light is focused downward, where it does the most good for people and the least effect on the dark night sky. And anyone can take action to reduce light pollution in their own communities. The one really interesting thing about light pollution is that it is the one pollution that is 100% reversible, which is a really, really great news. Keeping the night sky dark is a goal for the National Park Service, one that can go beyond park boundaries. When light pollution affects the night sky, we lose a cultural and ecological resource, one of the few the entire world shares. It's special, it's worth protecting. It's something that really is common to the whole human experience, even if we're losing touch with that. Zion is working to highlight the value of dark skies by talking about those connections. The third international dark sky park requirement is providing educational programming about how important it is to preserve darkness. We want to talk about the night sky in this beautiful, amazing canyon. That's what we care about, connecting this landscape to the night sky, not just a beautiful dark sky. The night sky is an ecological and cultural resource. It's an ecological resource because entire ecosystems depend on the night. Protecting dark night skies isn't just for us to be able to go out and to experience them. It's also to protect the homes of all the animals that live here. The night sky also connects us to our cultural heritage. Here in Zion, the night sky has a specific connection to Southern Paiute people. Members of the Paiute Indian tribe of Utah say they depend on the night sky for guidance, cultural awareness, and preparedness for life on earth and life after death. The night skies connect them to something larger on a universal level, like so many cultures around the world. This connection is what many people feel when experiencing the park's night skies, and is part of why it needs to be protected. 
Night skies have united people for millennia, as far back as we've been human. We've had the night sky overhead, and as we lose our connection to the night sky, we're also losing our connection to each other and to the past. The National Park Service welcomes visitors to enjoy Zion National Park's dark night sky by hosting a variety of free educational ranger talks, providing educational materials at visitor centers, and by sharing content online. You can visit information desks at visitor centers to ask questions or check go.nps.gov forward slash Zion Night Sky to find helpful materials. To explore the night sky on your own, whether you've been stargazing before or not, here are a few helpful tips. Before heading out, check the weather and moon phase. The moon or cloudy skies will obstruct your view of the night sky, so plan to stargaze on clear nights before the moon has risen or after it has set. Um, the half of the month where the moon is overhead, our sky is washed out by natural light pollution by the light of the moon. Next, pack the right gear. Dress in layers appropriate for the weather, grab some snacks, and make sure to avoid white light. After looking at white light, it takes your eyes 20 to 30 minutes to adjust to the dark. The only light that keeps your eyes adjusted to the darkness is red light. Don't look at a phone during that time. Don't look at a smartwatch during that time. And just look up. That's really, really what you want to do. Finally, choose a good spot to stargaze. Some top spots include the back patio of the Zion Human History Museum and the car pullout at Checkerboard Mesa. From there, all you have to do is sit back, look up, and take it all in. And when you're looking up, remember, there's more to the night sky than what meets the eye. So both for our own experience and for the experience of everything else living in this place, the night sky is a resource that we need to cherish and that we need to protect.